So, okay, so Jamie's episode, you know, it has like, the first big scenes of the season between Ben and Tina. Yeah, it does. I remember going to Jamie because I had this really hard time with it because it looked as if Tina was going in and just kind of confessing all her regret and all her sins, but I knew reading it that it wasn't that large, that it was a moment where the window opened and she was vulnerable with Beth. And it was a really tricky scene because it had to, I had to keep some of the cards close to my chest. And, you know, Jamie said that, be careful because she's in a relationship and you know that and you see that she's happy. So it's a tricky, tricky area. But yet it just comes out. And she starts to, it, it, I don't think she went over there. That's what I was going to ask. At all mm-hmm. to say what she said. I think she went over there to talk about her problems with, with Jenny and the script and her job problems. And then when she got into the house, and I think this happens a lot in relationships where you've had some distance, you had other relationships, you've moved in different directions, you're sharing custody of your children, and you sit in that house, and it's the house you've been in, and it feels warm, and it's, you just want to stay. There's nothing like seeing um, your ex's lover with your children, you know, like to see a connection like that brings it to another whole level. And when Jody signs to Angelica and Angelica signs back, it just, it's almost like it washes over Tina, like it washes over her whole being at that point, which is, this is more serious than I thought. What this is really like a big deal you? because um, fear and sadness. There's another element that comes into this is oh no, like what if what if my daughter begins to love her more than me, or what if there are all these elements? What if oh there's no what happens now? Like if, if she's in love with Jody, there's What do I, and, and then it's that feeling of, you know, <laughs> you always want what you can't have, you know, so if it looks like this is something I can't have, then it's even more attractive. Yeah. I do think well, that has that. And especially and, it, when you see somebody else wanting it and having it. Yeah, and it didn't work for Tina. The relationship she cho- she had chosen to have, like, it didn't work. She she chose Henry, and, it, and it, at the time when she made that choice, it seemed easy and less dramatic and that she thought this is going to be easier, there's going to be less fighting and when she actually got in it, she just, it didn't fit. When she's with Henry, she's actually in a less traditional role and that made complete sense to me. She has her job, she can, she can be busy with her job, he gives her space to do that. Um, he doesn't talk about his career all the time and the most important thing isn't his career or art or what's going on and all of a sudden she found a place for the first time she found this relationship and it's possible that she could have found that with another woman she just happened to find it with henry but ben and tina were in such a groove and it was very very hard to change that and it was especially hard to change it when you're in the relationship exactly and i think it i just think patterns like that are deep and they're deep they're sort of ingrained very deep and that they're i think for tina she needed at some point to just be part of a relationship where she wasn't feeling so submissive about it the core part of what's going on here in that scene is going on with her she's really lonely She's just really lonely because she hasn't been hanging out with the girls. She, um, you know, most people think she's been hanging out with Henry a lot, but she hasn't. She never moved in with him. And when she does, it hasn't been good, and it's not what she wants. And so I think she's been spending a lot of time at work and a lot of time alone. And I think when she talks about missing the company of women, there's a lot of it's longing a in that. A lot of longing in that, that. yeah. Because I, I just think that there's... I mean, you don't see Tina a lot in the beginning, and I think I think it's easier to assume, like, oh, she's just with Henry, or oh, she's in this hetero world, but I really, I think it's just like she's sort of just trying to figure out the balance of keeping this job, making money, seeing her child, and balancing out that, and 
dating this man who I think she finds that she's just not in love with. Do you think it's a matter of gay straight? I think LA is a hard city. It's hard to find good friends. Once you find them and you find your true friends, you hold on to them. This is my experience about being in LA. And um, those are her true friends. It's not, I don't know if it's gay or straight because if Alice all of a sudden had ended up with a guy or something, Alice would still be her best, you know, one of her best friends. Sure. You know, so it's really about support, a support network, and those, you know, those are her friends. I think, is it about gay or straight with with other people in the group and what happened with Tina? Yeah, 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 yeah. for other people she, it is. Yeah, for, and I don't think so much for Helena and for Shane. You really have to fight to. And Tina never says anything, and I, I really think that that was true to character. There were a couple of moments where I remember I wanted to go in and say, she needs to argue to this. She needs to say, what are we doing? You know, you fight not to be judged, and now you're judging me, you know? And I, I thought that that was the way to go, but when I really look at Tina and who she is, there's like a, a more of a quietness. There's more of a, okay... I'm going to sit with this for a little while. I'm not going to turn this into an argument. And I actually like that. No, this is I like that she didn't. I think there's a little part of, with Tina, I still think there's some guilt about everything. And I think that's another reason why she's not going to come out and say, oh, I'm going to fight this. She's just going to be like, okay, this is going to be hard. And this is what it's going to be. And so I'm not going to bring all this attention to it. I'm just going to live my life. Okay, now we can look at some of it. And, you know, I just, I just can, can we talk it? about the preschool thing? Because I think it's such a great oh, argument. I had a friend call me from New York and said, I can't believe I just watched that scene. I loved it. She's like, that is the fight that I have with my partner. Yeah. That is the exact fight. And my partner takes the stance of Tina, and I take the, the stance of Beth, where it's like, it matters everything, you know, it's just like, I think Tina's big fear, and she says it in that, I can't remember what the line is, I'm not going to let your, psych, your psycho dysfunction, dysfunction screw up her child before she gets to kindergarten. And I, I think Tina does have, you know, this fear that there'll be so much pressure on this child to be the smartest and the best and, and to win at everything that ultimately will be dysfunctional for the child. You know, I, I had a hard time, we're talking about, we're watching Kit right now, and, and I had a really hard time with the way that Tina ends up spilling the beans to Kit. But I think Tina no, it doesn't mean to hurt at all. No. But I think it's, she thinks that she's trying to deal from a place of honesty. But I it is so. a little bit, she's too far out there. I don't think it's, I, I, I mean, personally, I don't think it was, Tina should have gone there, but I can understand why Tina but I think too. Well, I mean, because really, Tina had been betrayed before, and that's what part of. But Tina thought that Kit knew. She, she thought Kit knew. 